Okay guys, I'm back and we are watching a dream. So let's see what this dream says. The family members have tears in their eyes when they welcome Khan back to the end for his long journey. Thank you so much for coming. He understands the situation. Immediately the time for departure is drawing near. And Hannah's departure appeared after that. Too soon, too soon. But still, he knows this day would have to come sometime, and not in the distant future. I might never see you again, she said to him with a sad smile. When he left on this journey, her smiling face almost transparent in its witness, so fragile and therefore so indescribable beauty as she lay in bed. May I see Hannah now, he asks. The innkeeper gives him a tiny nod and says, and says, I don't think she'll know who you are, though. She hasn't opened her eyes since last night, he warns Kaim. You can tell from the slight movement of her chest that she is clinging to a frail thread of life, but it could snap at any moment. It's such a shame. I know you made a special point to come here for her. Another tear glides down his wife's cheek. Never mind, it's fine, Kaim. He has been present at innumerable deaths in his in his experience has taught him much death takes away the power of speech first of all, then the ability to see what remains alive to the very end, however it is the power to hear. Even though the person has lost consciousness, it is by no means unusual for the voices of family to bring forth smile and tears. Time puts his arms around the woman's shoulder and says, I have lots of travel stories to tell her. I've been looking forward to this my whole time on the road. Instead of smiling, the woman releases another large tear and nods to Kaim. And Hannah was so looking forward to hearing her stories. Her sobs almost drown out her words. The innkeeper says, I wish I could ar argue you to... Wait, urge you to rest up from the travels before you see her, but... Kaim interrupts his apologies. Of course, I'll see her right away. There is very little time left. Hannah is the only daughter of the innkeeper, and his wife will probably breathe her last. Will probably breathe her last before the sun comes up. Kaim lowers his back to the floor and quietly opens the door to Hannah's room. Hannah was frail from birth, far from enjoying the opportunity to travel. She rarely left the town or even the neighborhood, in that matter, in which she was born and raised. This child will probably not live to adulthood. The doctor told her parents. To this tiny girl with extraordinarily beauty, beautiful doll-like features, the gods have dealt an all-too-sad destiny. That they had allowed her to be born the only daughter of the keepers of a small inn by the highway was perhaps one small act of atonement for such inequity. Hannah was unable to go anywhere, but the guests who stayed in her parents' inn would tell her stories of the countries and towns and landscapes and the people she would never know. Whenever new guests arrived in the inn, Hannah would ask them, Where did you come from? Where are you going? Can you tell me a story? She would sit and listen to her stories with sparkling eyes, urging them to on to new episodes. That's annoying. And then and then, and when they left the inn, she would beg them, Please come back and tell me lots and lots of stories from faraway countries. She would stand there waving until the person disappeared far down the highway gave one last lonely sigh and go back to bed. Hannah is sound asleep. No one else in the room, perhaps an indication that she is long since past. The stage when the doctors can do cannot the stage when the doctors can do anything for her. Kime sits down on the chair next to the bed and says with a smile, Hello Hannah, I'm back. She does not respond. Her little chest still without the swelling of a grown woman rises and falls almost in I went far across the ocean this time, he tells her. The ocean on the side where the sun comes up. I took a boat from the harbor way, way, way far beyond the mountains. You can see from the window and was on the sea from time. 
the moon was perfectly round until it got smaller and smaller, and then bigger and bigger until it was full again. There was nothing but ocean as far as the eye could see, just the sea and sky. Can you imagine it, Hannah? You've never seen the ocean, but I'm sure people have told you about it. It's like a huge, big, endless puddle. Time chuckles to himself, and it seems to him that Hannah's pale white cheek moves slightly. She can hear him, even if she cannot speak or see. Her ears are still alive. Believing and hoping this to be true, Haim continues with the story of his travels. He speaks no words of parting. As always with Hannah, Haim smiles with a special gently list he has never shown to anyone else. And he goes on telling his tales with a bright voice, sometimes even occupying his story with exaggerated gestures. He tells her about the blue ocean, blue skies. He says nothing about the violent sea battle that stained the ocean red. He never tells her about those things. And it was still very tiny when Kaim first visited the inn. When she asked him, where are you from? And will you tell me some stories? Question mark. And with her childish pronunciation and an innocent smile, Kaim felt a small, soft glow to his chest. At a time he was returning from battle, more precisely he had ended one battle and was on his way to the next. His life consisted of traveling from one battlefield to another, and nothing about nothing about that has changed to this day. He has taken the lives of countless enemy troops and witnessed the death of countless comrades on the battlefield. Moreover, the only thing separating enemies from comrades is the slightest stroke in fortune and the gears of destiny turn slightly in a different way. His enemies would never have been comrades, and his comrades' enemies, this is the fate of a mercenary. He was spiritually born down back then and feeling unbearably lonely. As the professor of eternal life, Kime, possessor of eternal life, Kime has no fear of death, which is precisely why each of the soldier faces distorted in fear, and why each of a man who died in agony has burned permanently into his brain. Ordinarily, he would send nights on the road drinking immensely, immersing himself in an alcoholic stupor or pretending to. He was trying to make himself forget the unforgettable. When, however, he saw Hannah smile, and as she begged him for stories about his long journey, he felt far warmer and deeper comfort than he could ever obtain with liquor. He told her many things about the beautiful flower he discovered on the battlefield, about the, be about the bewitching beauty and the mist of filling the forest of the night before the final battle, about the marvelous taste of the spring water in the raven where he and his men had fled after a losing battle, about the vast bottomless blue sky he saw after a battle. He never told her about anything sad. He kept his mouth shut when a human ugliness and stupidity he witnessed endlessly on the battlefield. He concealed his position as a mercenary from her, kept silent regarding his reasons for traveling constantly, and spoke only of the things that were beautiful, sweet, and lovely. He sees now that he told Hannah only beautiful stories on the road like this, not so much out of concern for her purity, but for his own sake. Staying in the inn where Hannah waited to see him turned out to be one of Kaim's small pleasures in life. Telling her about the memories he brought back from his journeys, he felt some degree of salvation, however slight. Five years, ten years, his friendship with the girl continued little by little. She neared adulthood, which meant that, as the doctors had predicted each day, brought her that much closer to death. Well, doesn't that make sense for everybody? And now, Kaim ends the last travel story he will ever share with her. He can never see her again, can never tell her the stories again. Before dawn, when the darkness of night is the deepest, long pauses enter the, into Hannah's breathing, the frail thread of life that is about to snap as Kaim and her parents watch over her. The tiny light that is dodged in Kaim's breast will be extinguished. His lonely travels will begin again tomorrow, his long, long travels without end. You'll be leaving on the travels of your own son, Hannah. Soon, Hannah, Kaim tells her gently. You will be leaving from a world that no one knows, a world that has never entered into any of the stories you have heard so far. 
Finally, you will be able to leave your bed and walk anywhere you want to go. You'll be free. He wants her to know that death is not a sorrow, but a joy mixed with tears. It is your turn now. Be sure to tell everyone about the memories of your journey. Her parents will make that same journey someday. And someday Hannah will be able to meet all the guests she has known at the end far beyond the sky. I, however, can never go there. I can never escape this world. I can never see you again. This is not goodbye. It's just the start of your journey. He speaks his final words to her. We'll meet again. His final lie to her. Hannah makes her departure. Her face is transfused with a tranquil smile, as if she has said, See you soon. Her eyes will never open again. A single tear glides slowly down her cheek. End. View the Thousand Years of Dreams tutorial. Kime's mind is filled with lost pieces of past memories. Certain sights or conversations can bring these memories back in the form of dreams. To view episodes from a thousand years of dreams again, rest at any inn or bed or select them from the start menu. You can view these episodes any number of times. When viewing an episode from a thousand years of dreams, you could pause it by pressing the start button or cancel it by pressing the back button. And no.